So, um, all right, so this is, um, um, what was I gonna say? So, oh, announcements. So um, announcements are uh, as follows. So if you're, uh, this, uh, the connection with uh, this uh, one node is not perfect, but in principle, what I write here is mirrored on your, if you have, have a copy of one node open, then uh, what I write here is mirrored on your copy eventually with some lag. And so you can, if you want to scroll back and see what uh, what happened before, then you can do that. So this is this is not perfect, but that it's kind of a menu that it works. And uh, also, if you um, have some uh, things to say during the um, during the lecture, maybe you should use the chat. And then, uh, if not during the lecture, then we I try to create this Telegram channel, and there is a discussion group attached to that channel. So maybe maybe there is a place to to put your suggestions, questions, and, and so on and so forth. So um, I believe the way it works is that there's a there is a discussion group attached to a channel. Like everybody can you change can uh, can join that. Now um, as to the plan. So today I was going to talk. Maybe uh, my goal for today is maybe to explain uh, what is it I'm going to explain in this course. So um, so uh, it'll be uh, so maybe we'll take a, an hour and a half to. Uh, to get to, to to try to say what 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 this course will be about, and um, and I would try to so I think the style of this course I, the way I see the style of this course is I'm going to talk about simple things uh, slowly and complicated things uh, <laughs> maybe uh, uh, not in as much detail so that uh, and. Uh, well, you, so in particular, I was going to spend uh, some time talking about just very, very basics of the subject. And then, um, so well, you'll see. So uh, the problem we want to uh, study today, this is, or in this course, this is generalization of the following, of the following um, general kind of old problem in representation theory. So. Old, an old problem, maybe classical, except it's quantum. So I would say classical. So old problem in representation theory. Is a problem of harmonic analysis of maybe the following kind. So suppose I have um, a group G acting on a manifold. Manifold M. And uh, say me preserving the metric, so the x by my isometries of the metric, and then I have um, so isometries. Since I'm going to talk about Laplace operator, and then uh, and then I have a G invariant function. Let's call it phi to reals, so G invariant. Then I can look for. Um, the spectrum of Laplace operator. So if I take like the operator minus the Laplace and plus phi, the evolution operator in, in, in quantum mechanics. So this is, I can ask for, um, so I'd like to the eigenvalues of this. So I'd like to understand. So let's see, I take the, the I want to say the eigenvalues, I want to be eigenspaces. Understand the eigenspaces of this operator here. I want to understand S G modules. These are finite dimensional since it's a so we say uh, you know there's some reasonable conditions, it's elliptic operator. And so this is um, in um, so in uh, let me open my notes. Um, so this is uh, so in in mathematical physics that would correspond to a propagation of uh, like a quantum particle on the manifold M. So in fact, I have a picture here in the background of my. I hope you can see it. So uh, it's like I have a manifold with a group action and I have a, 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 a particle propagating 
here and the way if I want to understand the if I want to understand the uh, the um, uh, if I if I know the spectrum of this uh, so J modules and in particular I can I can understand not just the evolution operator but evolution operator in the presence of the group so I can for example compute the trace so I can compute the trace of like so, so the typical problem is eg in particular in particular and compute the trace trace of evolution for some some for some time t times the group element g and so this is a, you know, something i'd like to for example things like this i'd like to compute and so this is of course um in general this is a uh this is this can be there's a lot of work on things like this that if i so good cases classical cases very good cases very good cases is when m is homogeneous so m is g mod h or or almost homogeneous something like or like m is maybe rn and the function is rotation so the group is a group of say rotations it's my group g and phi is only depends on the radius, so it's rotation invariant. So these are these are very good cases because, like for example, in the second case, we understand the harmonic analysis on the sphere, and so then, and so then, uh, if I um, if I take the quotient of R n by this rotation, then I am left with one-dimensional operator. Okay, we can understand the spectrum of one-dimensional operator. But in general, it's hard. So in general, this is very difficult to to um, to compute. And then this is uh, this really simplifies uh, so a great simplification. Maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't should not have used emphasis color for that. So I said in the presence. of supersymmetry and uh, so what does it mean um, then our uh, uh, this evolution operator in quantum mechanics is supersymmetric it means that uh, first of all our uh, Hilbert space um, the um, so if I have um, I have my um, H, which is the, just the Hilbert space. This this is uh, this is a Z mod two graded. So this is um, H even plus H odd, which could be, for example, geometrically maybe realized that these are so these are sections of some. So this is the space of sections of some bundle over my manifold BAM, maybe of some bundles E1 and E2. And this are the this is even and this is odd. EG EG could be something like this, could be a uh, even an odd degree differential forms on M. And then uh, my operator, my evolution operator is in fact a square of um, an operator of the form maybe D plus D star square, where D is a, so D is a, an operator that, that exchanges, takes, even to odd, like for example, eg here d could be the Dirac operator, and star is the adjoint operator with respect to uh, Riemannian metric on M, and then um, then then what um, if I um, and so this is, we assume everything is also group invariant. 
And then if we write now our space as a direct sum of eigenspaces, maybe I put the, maybe I put this would be, this would be my eigenvalue. Then, um, and so these are, these are separately even and ungraded. Then uh, for, for non-zero eigenvalues, for lambda not equals zero, uh, an, easy, uh, an easy, very easy argument shows that um, H lambda even to H lambda odd. And you can continue this periodically, maybe write it like this, H lambda even. If I use this operator D here, Right, I, sorry, I forgot to say most important thing that this discord is zero. This is differential. So like, for example, for example, if Durham, Durham, um, Durham differential squares to zero, and if I take uh, its anti-commutator with, uh, with uh, its uh, adjoint operator with respect to my Riemannian metric, then I'm gonna get, then I'm gonna get some, well, I'm gonna just get Laplace and no, no uh, if I had something here. Right? So this is exact, is exact. So if I, if I'm now interested, if I, if I take the difference, if I take, so the difference of this, so the class of this, of H lambda even, uh, let, me, let me do it. So you can consider each of this is a G module. Maybe exact sequence is an exact, is an exact sequence of G modules. So if we take the difference between them, that's a zero element. So, so H even minus H on the odd, this is a zero element. So this is a zero element in, maybe a direct difference, in the representation ring. And so, um, So this is representation ring is 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 the ring spanned by irreps. So this is this is this is the ring with respect to direct sum and, and formal inverse the direct difference and the 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 the, the, the uh, product being uh, the uh, the tensor product of representation. That's the same. This is the same as the ring of characters. Ring uh, generated by characters. by um, by characters of G, G, if G is say a unitary group, then this is you take a integer linear combination of X and take symmetric where, where uh, you should think of this are the eigenvalues of a matrix here. So that's, anyway, that's a zero. And so, and so the, only, the, only interesting, the only interesting element here is therefore the, it's therefore um, for lambda equals zero, we're talking, so IE, so what does it mean zero? Means, means this is the lowest possible Lange state. These are I ground states. Ground states of our Hamiltonian. Then this is, um, this, this ground states, and this, this, if I take the, the even ground states, H zero even minus H zero odd. Uh, 
this is this is a this is an element. So this is now again this is an element in this representation ring. So it's an element in this representation ring, which is denoted usually you just reserve have G. Uh, so this is this is now um, this is an interesting element. This is called the index, and it's really an index of a, so it's really in, it's an index of a elliptic differential operator. So this is this is called this is called by definition called the index. And the most important, and so this is. And so formally, and in fact, formally, this is, uh, this is, um, so somehow formally, this is the same as you take the whole Hilbert space and subtract the, subtract the even and the odds. So in some, when you're computing, in other words, when you're computing the, the if you're computing in the sense that if I compute the trace, if I compute this, this super trace, super trace of, of their evolution operator, as we were trying to compute before, times G, this is computed over whole entire Hilbert space. This is the same as just the computed trace in the, in the, um, since everything, all the non-zero eigenvalues cancel out, this is just becomes the trace in this index of the element G. Right? So the evolution of, since this is ground state, the, 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 um, the evolution there is trivial is the identity operator. And so then we get just the action of G and then how it acts here minus how it is acting. And so this is, um, this is uh, from this presentation. It's clear that this makes it. This is in fact. So if uh, if we um, this is topological invariant. So if something which we if we change the um, if we change the uh, an operator within the within the uh, of maybe of analytic differential operator so if we if we change an operator within the elliptic world then the uh, you know individual eigenvalues will change but all the non-zero eigenvalues will be always Paired, paired up, uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, and so and so this this difference between this difference between even and odd, this will be always the same. We can always we can also you know, we can always write this we can write this difference as a difference of two spectral projectors where we take cut off an operator at some some arbitrary large arbitrary large eigenvalue something like that. And this is this is given by so given by uh, this is somehow given by the famous Tzinger formula which we um, which I I I will you know maybe this is this lecture is not is not the place uh, to uh, to for me to talk about the details, but uh, but the um, but maybe the uh, kind of the main the main message for us from from this Atizing reform was that maybe I'll discuss the structure, what the structure is. So the structure is um, so this is this is in terms of so it's it it gives you so 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 then we this is this is in terms the 
in the results in terms of um, G equivalent K theory of M. So, K theory. So this would be uh, this is an important. Um, this is an important, uh, uh, this is a very important thought, theme for this course in that, in that what's a K, a K theory is an example. So if I take, um, so if I have a more general topological, topological space M and uh, there is functor that associates groups, maybe with an action of G. These are abelian groups and in fact rings. So these are abelian groups. Also, also with product. Um, and so this is this is uh, this is a functor. So this is a functor, kind of a functor. <laughs> and this is an example of something very important for us. This is uh, uh, this is an example of cohomology theory. Cohomology theory is uh, is like a projection of geometry into algebra. And this would be essential for us when we talk about geometric. Well, it will be essential as whatever, but in particular, the one of the one of the uh, uh, in the title of the course, there is geometric representation theory. And what does it mean to have a geometric representation theory? It means that um, that uh, we construct some kind of, instead of contracting an operator acting on a vector space, or maybe, uh, uh, or in fact, maybe not even on vector space, maybe on a free module over a ring, or maybe some module over some ring, then uh, then means, um, it means the instead we construct some geometric object, and then when we take the, the this this k functor that gives me gives us both the operators and the both the spaces on which they act and and the operators by which they act, and so then this is this is um, this is how we understand uh, this is on the one hand is how we understand uh, maybe representation theory in terms of geometry, but also how we understand geometry in terms of representation theory. If, if, if under such functor, things we want to understand go to some uh, representation theoretic objects that we, will, that we feel we understand or we do understand from some other reason, then, uh, then this is, um, then this is, uh, yeah, this is good. And so what is it for key theory? So an example, so this is an example, this is an example. of a uh, cohomology theorem, we, we will talk about more, of course we will have to talk about cohomology theories later in the course, but uh, so this is, uh, this is here. So if say, if M is, if, if a G, if for simplicity, if M is compact, and Hausdorff, well, I'm not gonna write Hausdorff, then K zero, G of M, this is this is the group of, so this is like this is like representations of G, but indexed by uh, by uh, by points of M. So this is an element here. So maybe I'll. So an element here is what? What's an element here? So I had my manifold. So this was my manifold. M, and it had an action by G. So G was acting on this manifold. So I'll just write. So if I had some point M, I could G M. And now I'd like a vector bundle over this. So this is so I have a vector, a complex vector bundle. So V is a complex vector bundle. 
uh, which is G covariant, meaning that if I if I consider the fiber over M or the fiber over G M, then then there is an action of the group G on the total space that that covers the action on the base and in the fiber attacks by linear transformation. So this is so this is the definition of a G covariant if a G covariant uh, vector bundle. So again, this is oh, this is the analog of, of if M is a point, then so maybe 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 to make it make the connection here. So K G zero over point, that is going to be just our old representation ring of G. So, uh, but now, so this was a vector space on which G acted, and then, uh, and then uh, the <coughs> the uh, uh, but now, but now I have a, a vector bundle, a collection of vector spaces indexed by points of points of M, and then. Um, and then, uh, um, and then I demand that the, in the fiber over each point, the action is actually by linear transformation. So, it's, so this is it. And this is this is uh, this is a semi group semi ring with operations, which is given by direct sum, and the tensor product. So this makes it a semi ring. And we uh, and we make it a group. At formally. Just like with representation ring. With representation ring, we start with actual representation, but then we consider differences of representations, and so, and then some equivalence relation on differences of this representation. And so we add this formula and we obtain this object. And then the other K groups are given through a given, I, 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 if I consider, uh, well, in fact, the K groups are periodic, and the other K groups you have to consider the suspension of M, for example, to, to get to the other K groups. Well, we'll talk about this. Later, but so then, um, so uh, kind of the real, the real context of a T single theorem. So this, in particular, the index. So I had a. So we had. What did we have? We have um, our manifold M, which I will just copy here again. Uh, with an action of G. And over that manifold, I had two vector bundles. So I had uh, one vector bundle, V even. And then I had another vector bundle, V odd. And I had um, an operator. Um, goes back and forth between this, this operator D. And from this, so this was all G covariant. So, and then, um, uh, and from this, if I take the index, I go to a current K theory of a point since the index is a virtual representation of the group. But so what, but there is an intermediate step, namely there is some kind of index bundle first. So there is a, there is a, a kind of a bundle of indices. So just write local index, which is an element which is well defined in equivalent K theory of manifold M. And then there is a, there is a, and then there is this push forward. Push forward with respect to M going to point. So homology theories of the kind that we would like to uh, that we would like to understand, they have operations like push forward, like the original theory we think of differential for during the RAM comma, that's integration differential forms, or otherwise somehow push pushing forward elements in any way you want. And so uh, and so this is in this is this is now computed. This is computed 
this is computed in the Artesian theorem by Riemann Rauch, but in principle, it's just in this operation, which just as natural as a push for it's reduced to cohomology and cohomology. I'll write it like it's computed via cohomology theorem. That this is we will we will we will not be doing in this course. That we will be doing we will be always computing in K theory or even some fancy cohomology theories. We, will, we won't be using Riemann Roch in the sense that in fact I mean Riemann Roch is a great theoretical tool, but usually if you take um, if you well my well, well we'll talk about it. So for some my favorite thing, my favorite example if we take the vile character formula. Vile character formula is a very simple formal for push forward in case you push forward of a line bundle from uh, uh, from flag manifold to a point. And uh, so in, this in case is very easy, easy to compute, but it's uh, if you compute it by Riemann Rauch, then it <laughs> becomes a very good exercise on, on uh, manipulating series. So anyway, so this, and, and there is like, and the real kind of, I mean, this, this the really important thing in the case is, is this, is this error. So you start with this and you go with that. And the and the in and, and I will I want to say few, one word about 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 um, about how this works because this will be important for motivating the next um, so this is let me put many exclamation marks here. Well, not the many exclamation marks. This is the part that we would like to emphasize today. You can emphasize. So you can emphasize different different ideas at different times. Like for example, if we take so this is like uh, this is so what I'm the point of view I'm trying to to um, to advocate here is that this is like computing computing what you want is an integral of a function, and the pushing forward this is like the integral sign, meaning. Meaning, uh, when students uh, learn to compute integrals, either symbolic or numerical, they realize this is not easy. I mean, it's some actual work. But then, for later in life, you usually leave integral sign well, just whatever integral, and you concentrate on what's under the integral. And so that's uh, that's similarly here. I mean, this is uh, this is this is an interesting discussion how you actually integrate. But uh, more interesting to to discuss what is it you integrate, and uh, the what you integrate is. Um, is the following this this is so while this looks like a something in case you have two vector bundles here but uh just looks like something we can i can just take the difference between v even and v odd and be done but that that is not right because this map d this d is a differential operator here so d is differential operator. In particular, so not, this map is not linear over functions on it. A map between vector bundles, so a vector bundle is, is like a family of vector spaces parameterized by a point on M and analog, so usually for linear spaces we uh, we uh, study linear operators. And so uh, an analog of a linear operator in the situation is a map between uh, between total space of the bundle, which is linear over, over map from section, which is linear over functions on M. And so, which is, which is not the case here. And so to make, to make this, to make this, um, so what, what you really somehow to, to, uh, this is really a non commuting kind of, kind of D module object. And what it really is, you can make, you can make the set, well, to, so this, so, so the way, the way to, to, to think about it is, so, so this may be my M, this is my old M, and to encode, and to encode the, um, the derivatives I have to take, so when I you know, have a section, I apply differential operator, I have to take derivatives. So to encode the derivatives, I have to consider the, the cotangent bundle of M, so it will be T star of M, so this is my M. 
maybe I should try to draw it more horizontally since we have to pull back a vector back into it. So, so maybe this is my this is my m. These are the cotangent directions to m. And over that now, I can I have I can now um, so what were my colors here? Um, green. So now I have um, I have a pullback to this. So there is a there is a projection of the cotangent bundle to the M itself. So we call it pi. And so then I. Uh, I, if I pull back my vector bundles here, so that now, like for example, at least the symbol of so maybe maybe not maybe not the differential operator itself but if i take uh um you know like take a take a associate grade respect to some filtration then the symbol of my operator d is now mapped between these two bundles so that is now that is now something that lives in the key theory of this total space but this is this is uh what it is when it means it's elliptic means uh, what does it mean this operator elliptic elliptic means means that this is an isomorphism that this is an isomorphism away from the zero section Which is what my, what my M inside C star M. And so in, in K theory, there is there's K theory like any cohomology theory, there is a there's excision. It means if you have some element in K theory and you restrict it, so you have a, so this way you have a, this this manifold and then you have a closed subset, and then you uh, you uh, uh, you restrict you restrict your element to the complement of the closed subset and you discover the restriction is zero like you know here here this 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 symbol that is that is an isomorphism between gives you an isomorphism between two bundles on the complement of this zero section and so that means means comes means comes from comes from some from some elements which we call, we call local index. So maybe local index. This is an element in the K covariant K theory of M. So this is this is what we want to. So that it's this object that we're trying to put. We're trying to put here. So this is this is what when you when you compute something then you uh, you uh, uh, you mean you this is the right, so that's and then uh, kind of conclusion from this it's kind of what we question. Maybe it comes from something even smaller. <laughs> so in principle, it could be the case that what you're trying to compute is in fact inside M, there is something smaller inside. So there's something some you know, kind of smaller subset inside them and 
means no. So that would be that would be a natural geometric question to ask. So this is maybe there's some good situations when in fact it, you don't have to look at all at everything. And so and in fact, so here's an example of uh, of of for so eg. EG when we compute the trace trace of G times the evolution operator for some time T. Remember this is what we some time T. So this is in principle like about in there is no this if you will see maybe I'll move this way. So there is no there is no point. So this is like a, you look at the involution operator computing this. This is somehow, if you're computing the trace, there is no point to look away from the points that are actually fixed by G because you think it's somehow, if you compute the trace of a matrix, you have to only look, you have to only look for, uh, for uh, diagonal matrix elements. No, no, there's some, you know, some complicated matrix you're trying to compute it, you're trying to compute its trace, then there's, there's no point thinking about off diagonal matrix elements. So then this somehow, this is, this really comes from points fixed from from the fixed locus of G inside there. But there's many other scenarios where you where you start with some index that you'd like to compute and then um, and then uh, and then realize that in fact it it lives on something much in some smaller set. And this would be a saving grace so this is um, so something like this is um, Oh no. So this is this is this is kind of really important. Important if M is infinite dimensional. So so in fact so in, in this lectures we're not talking about problems that originate in um, in quantum mechanics, instead we would like to um, to talk about problems that originate in um, so in D, so in fact something like a quantum field theory in d plus one dimension. Then you have some space. The color of my space may be yellow. We have some time. And your manifold M is, is, is something like a space of field. So this is like functions. This is like maps from space. To some, to some, uh, to some, to some set of configurations. X. This, is, this is this is kind of configuration space at the point, which is not well. We'll talk about it more somehow. We should think for now. For now, this is space. The configuration space at the point. And in fact, specifically, the uh, we will be interested when we will be interested in the situation. For us, we will be interested in two plus one dimension, so that space will look like a, a will look like this uh, will look like something like this uh, like this uh, you know like a Riemann surface in my background. There's an arrow of time, and that back. The Riemann surface might have uh, some, you know, some, 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 some operators may be inserted at the points of the Riemann surface. So they'll have their uh, their timelines going along the arrow of time. They might have boundary, and then there will be corresponding kind of tubes of boundary where the boundary conditions live. And so this is this is look looks is, this is looks very very this is looks. <laughs> You know, okay, but we can't we can't really work with this, or at least we, we don't want to work with this. And then M prime 
inside here on which the on which the uh, on which the solutions the index will be localized this would be this comes from this are this come from extended supersymmetry Meaning, if you have more, more of these operators D, which uh, which uh, which you can use, you can cut down your you can cut down the out your um, you can cut down the support of your you know think of this if the D is just one uh, you know like if you have a D is uh, just kind of one element in some complex, but if you have more operators that commute or skew commute with D, you can build a can build a bigger complex that will that will that will cancel out over a bigger set, and so uh, so this somehow some kind of other brothers brothers of operator D. So when D has has a brother, so D already had the so this is uh, the number of brothers is usually called the n in supersymmetry. So this. <laughs> And so then, and so these are solutions, typical solutions. This is a space of solutions, some PD. And so, uh, and uh, and so usually, so some, and, and again, after elliptic. Elliptic condition. This is finite. So this could be maybe could be um, of infinite disjoint union of finite dimension. If it's if the problem is suitably elliptic, then disjoint union of finite dimension. And so then we can we can. So in particular, for in the situation when we when we, which is depicted in, in the background of, of this here, then what we would like to have is, is that what one can achieve is when this, um, is when this, uh, this, this, this space, we choose a complex structure on that space. And then on the target X, we also fix a complex structure. And then we would like that map to be holomorphic to that complex structure. So in particular, in particular, e.g. So the, the case the case we want here is that when m so when m so I'll just replace m by m prime so I'll just m is the space of holomorphic maps from a Riemann surface and it might have some mark points p1 pn whatever so do we, do let's not talk about we're not going to allow boundaries for now but just require some special boundaries are hard in this case so this is mark points. And this is a compact Riemann surface. To some, and with a holomorphic map F to X, this is a complex map. And then, um, so, um, and now we get, and now what we get is, um, is on this manifold leaves, on this leaves, on 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 something like this on the space of on this manifold, this one can define on this maybe not here but on this on such a one constructs by means of algebraic geometry.
some shape. That looks some some shape means some element. Some element in KGM. Some, this is some very, this is all we know about the space right now. It's some, uh, it's a very singular, let's say algebraic variety. Let's, let's just, let's just not talk, not talk about algebraic variety. Let's not talk about an algebraic case. All we know right now, this is a union of finite dimensional, potentially very, very singular algebraic varieties. But uh, one one can construct of this um, some element that looks like a, that place substitutes that stands in for the local index of um, of this operator of Dirac operator T. So this is this is I'm I'm absolutely jumping over this now because this is requires some complicated algebraic geometry and we will not and depends on make some assumptions on the space AX and so on and so forth. So this is, will be this will but 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 you can imagine that this is something like this can be defined. And then what we would like to know, well of course one can maybe first try to before before uh um uh, maybe this this lesson from this AT, when my, my discussion of the theorem says is that in K theory you um, you um, you know you don't you wait with push forwards or in general cohomology theories you you kind of push forward at the last moment you don't you know you uh, you uh, you do as much as you somehow instead of instead of maybe you think well maybe let's just compute that index and just push it forward to to a point, well, we can just push it forward to, we have a map from M maybe I'll denote it here. So there's a map that forgets, forget the map F. And what it does, it goes to moduli Moduli of the curve C with my points, except what I don't want to. I don't want to forget the map entirely. I want to remember where it goes to, except except its values at the points F P one, F P N, and so this would go to X N. And so we would like to know an element in here. And, and there is a language to describe elements in this space. It's a nice, very nice language. Here, well, <laughs> but so, and this is again. We will maybe talk about this this in the course a little bit later. But uh, maybe here I can I can specify what is the group G. I said the group G could be. So what is the group G? What's the natural group that acts here? Well, the group G, the natural group here acts. It's well, it's the automorphism group of my curve. She's really only interested in when the curve is of low genus, has few marked points, but it's uh, anyway, cross the automorphisms of X. Right? So this, this class is really, if this is the way this class is constructed, it's really a covariant with respect to this group or 
I mean, the automorphism of x could be an infinite dimensional group, but means it all, means we, we can choose like a maximal reductive subgroup. So I'll just write this. So, um, and so this, there's a, there's a, this is, is a point that this is, uh, this is the K classes because this are, because this form, because this form a coherent collection, coherent in the sense, not, I mean, also when it's just a case of algebraic geometry, but also in the sense that they, they agree with each other. So they form a coherent collection over all genera number of marks point, number of mark point, et cetera. So the basic, the basic operation here is if you, uh, you can ask, so in this, so we started with a smooth, we started with the smooth uh, C, but in principle, you can, you can imagine that instead of a, a curve C, some mark point, you can have, um, um, you can have, you can extend this. So this is my, this moduli space M sits inside a bigger moduli space where you allow your curve to degenerate in, in some controllable fashion. So this sits, this moduli space sits inside some bigger moduli space. And you can extend that somehow that shift into, into that into that direction. And then of course, when your curve, when your curve degenerates, then you can say, well, this would be, there should be the restriction of my K theory class to the locus, to the boundary where, where I have curve like this. Well, that has to be some operation where I uh, now have one more mark point here. And then another more mark point here. There's some, said to be some kind of operation on K theory classes that tells me how this class is related to this class. And this is uh, axiomatized in, in the language, well, people call it, well, people call it cohomological field theory, but it's, uh, uh, and they, they talk about, uh, but really cohomology theory could be any cohomology theory you want. Um, so then, so there's this, there's some, there's some, there's something, you, there's some kind of gluing you do with this class to recover the restriction of this class to that. And this is, this is a, a coherent collection of K-theory classes of this kind. This, uh, this are very, this is a very constrained structure and people have really, um, really good control over them. So, and so that structure reduces so somehow theories Reduces to very um, to a few basic tensors, like if I have um, a sphere with three marked points, there's only one such. That just really gives me uh, an element in the K theory of uh, automorphism. X equivalent K theory of X cubed, right. and then uh, so this is this is like um, in terms of you think of terms of uh, field theory, this is like knowing the uh, the fusion rules. And then uh, there there are a few more things. There are a few more operators you can you can there there are a few more operators that have to do with with what you put at the two marked points. In fact, this, in some sense, this would be even more basic things, but then you remember the equivariance. So this, the sphere with two mark point has, has an element Q, which is a and C star, which is, which is the group of automorphisms of P1 with two mark points. And then, and then this gives you, things like this give you elements in equivariant K3 in the kind of C star, this kind of Q cross automorphisms of x equivalent k theory of x square. 
So in terms of tensors like this, one, will, one can understand the whole thing, which kind of makes sense. So if you have like a basic, if you think of this uh, as coming from some sort of field theory on the curve, and if you know what happens in a flat space, you should be able to put it on any geometry. And so then it's, uh, that is, uh, so the physicists would not be surprised that, that if you know the index, what this index does on, 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 sim on simple geometries like this, then you should be able to compute what it does on any, on any surface. And so this is computed, and now this would be computed, things like this would be computed. So now like the, one of the goals of the course is to compute Go first go to explain how to compute this or identify this in terms of some metric theory. Station theory. For which, for which these are spaces, for which, for this are spaces, or whatever, cakes for which, things, for which things like k equivariant k theory. I'll just write k equivariant of x are spaces. So geometric representation theory has, well, I want to end this straight by example that it has very little or somehow nothing to do. So this is something that x, you have a group which acts on k theory and, uh, and uh, this is, uh, um, this has little or nothing to do with the actual action variety itself. And so, and so this would be, so I, I want to make the following trivial example, except that trivial example, so would be kind of important. So this is geometric representation theory of, so first of what of what? Of quantum, certain quantum. quantum loop groups. This will be, will be some time, we'll spend some time explaining what this thing is. So maybe I need to underline too much. So, uh, so silly example first, maybe silly example, which is not so silly. So if I take, if my X is a two point space. Just really two points. Then it's K theory. Well, K theory of a point is integers because it just remembers the dimension, the dimension, uh, the dimension of the vector space, that's all. And then that is for said that's two integers. Okay. And on this, act two by two matrices with coefficients in, in Z, which is, which is the key theory of X cross X. And in fact, if you think about how, how uh, you know, what is a matrix multiplication? The rule for matrix multiplication, you can phrase in terms of pull, you pull back to the, to the product and you push forward. So this is the elements of any, any cohomology theory of a product by, well, any multiplicity one with the one that has pushed for. So if you have a cohomology theory or some functor from a spaces to algebras and that it has pullbacks and has multiplication, has push forwards, you can phrase matrix and then in particular, your finite set, you're gonna have recover matrix multiplication by pullback, multiply, push forward. So that's, that's this. And well, you think, well, maybe this is, this is slightly idiotic, but this is, this is such X 
So this this theory, what we're going to just describe today, it has to make connection at some point. The the uh, the classical theory of quantum groups, like the the golden the golden standard of mathematical physics, that originated in the study of lattice models. And this is so this is something like this is the 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 kind of the local configuration space. For e.g. SL2 vertex models. All right. So this is uh, this is things like so this is uh, maybe I'll put the background. I have prepared. So, so this is uh, a vertex model, something which starts out in a very discretized way, and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, um, uh, you know you you have a your degrees of freedom live on the discrete set, and the vertex model live on the edges of some graph, like on the edges of a square lattice, and then um, and then uh, um, there's some rules how interacted vertices. And so in particular, if I take one edge in the simplest SL2, fundamental so representation of SL2, it just can be in two states, you know, occupied or open. And so then, so then uh, a configuration of edges in the six vertex model, for example, what might look like this. It's just a configuration of paths on a, on a, on a square lattice that allow to, they can touch each other at corners. Um, but then every H is just has two spaces, and this is in fact so. In this case, then then this is quite precisely, this is quite precisely um, this this representation we're talking about. So this is this local configuration space, like the C two kx kx. If I make the coefficient be complex, this is a module. For uh, the quantum SL2 in a standard way, which is uh, how, which is this is the quantum. This there's a relation map from. In fact, let's follow by SL2. Let's take GL2. GL2. Okay, there is a map. GL2 hat, and this is the GL2 hat. This is the one, this is the quantum group of lattice models. Well, and then you can ask, well, how about, how can I possibly have a holomorphic map into X? And the point is that you don't you don't really map into X. You you map what you have when you compute the index. So this is this is some this is maybe so maybe so kind of kind of important point maybe. This X is kind of X. U V, which is the space space of states defined microscopical. Whereas whereas index is something when we talk about this kind of interpretation as in terms of holomorphic maps and things like this, then uh, then then what you, which, when you compute the index, you can imagine our index computation. One can assume that C, since, since index in principle of an operator depends on metric, but uh, it's, since index is an invariant of the metric, so you can you can imagine that the space is very very large. So the metric is such that the space is very large. 
in terms of if you define something on a match, you can say, you can say, well, it's like I'm going to imagine the match is very, very small. So I have my surface. I have my surface. So maybe one is enough. And maybe we'll have some colors for it. And then here I had this uh, this really really fun fine mesh. So but then so this was my that was my C. And I was <laughs> I was uh, there was something happening at the, you know, some kind of macroscopic degree of freedom that lived there, whatever, something I can't really see from far away. But, but because, because I can't really draw because from far away, I'm gonna only go only what, what, I, what I will find in, in the given space. This will be very well modeled by, by spaces that can exist. So, so in a neighborhood of a given space, this would be very, very modeled by just R4, I'm sorry, R2. And the states that can live in R2, that those are the states, yeah, we, we, we're interested in vacuum, vacuum states. In R2, remember we're only interested in the, in the, uh, we're only interested in the zero eigen values of, 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 of our evolution operator. So these are called vacuum states or zero eigen I mean, things are zero, zero eigenstates of infinitesimal evolution operator. So vacuum states are R2. These are the states that, that, can, uh, that can exist in infinite space and since the vacuum also in infinite time. And space that, states that can exist in infinite space and infinite time, those are, so, the states in R2 cross R. This is infinite, infinite space. Time, and those are, and those are, these are the, the same as Gibbs states. So this are this is definition what it means to, um, and there's 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 not so many of them. Like for example, if I have a a model that uh, that can be represented like a random so so this uh, a vertex model has a representation as a, a height function representation. So you think of this as a as a random function or a, or a graph of random functions a random surface, and that uh, and that uh, representation is uh, the Gibbs states in that representation are just, are, are, are indexed by, well, what's just the average slope of that? What's just the average slope of that, of that, uh, of the graph of that function? Or to say what just means the Gibbs states here in, in the example what I have see this is just as a parameterized, the space, this is parameterized just by the density. This is parameterized by zero one square this is the average density. Of horizontal. Vertical path. So it's like a square here. And it gets its it, it's square. It's actually has a has a natural complex structure that uh, that is has a complex structure comes from the surface tension. Surface there's some interesting function on this space. It's a, a surface tension which we in general for the six vertex model we only know it slightly implicitly, but that gives you gives it a natural metric and since uh, the, the, the conformal class of that metric is natural complex structure. And so then we would really so this is maybe we should call this space x 
so this sorry this was this was infrared here infrared and this is the ultraviolet and and our map is just really just really a map here when we compute the index we really go we really we don't really map to the macro to the what we use to the spatial states we used to define the theory but instead we map to some modular vacuum so this are this is my modular vacuum So in fact, so this is to say, many, many different theories uh, will have the same, not only the same index by virtue of being one. So if I have some theory, which is can be deformed to the other, then by index being deformation variant, they'll have the same index, but uh, they will have much more, many, many of them will have not just the same index, but in fact, the same modular space of vacuum. And so, they will look the same at large distances. And so in particular, they will have the same index for that reason. But we were interested in much more, much more interesting, uh, much more interesting situation where they have the same index for very non-trivial reasons. And uh, let me just put this picture. So this is a picture that some of you might have, when I, when I was uh, younger and the, and, the, uh, and the end of the world uh, looked farther away than it looks now, then you might have heard me talk about things like this. This is the case where we take, this is the case when we take a uh, dimer specialization of the six vertex. In this case, the surface tension is known explicitly and, uh, and this uh, has a very nice description term of algebraic geometry. And the only, and, and then, and then so really, really uh, there's some, you know, there's some, you know, the, the theory of like limit shapes for dimer's model can be the, the algebraic geometry that has to do with this. In fact, has to has a, you know, this, a this is not this is not unrelated. Although there, for example, here in this picture was this. Um, so since I have this this graph here, then uh, sorry, I'm gonna move here. So then uh, the the uh, the uh, the algebraic geometry here is says that uh, that I'm looking for a plane curve, and this is the, you have to you have to. Uh, distinguish two different planes. One is, uh, you see the one, the plane of the picture is, uh, is a plane which no preferred complex structure. The complex structure has to be determined in the process. And so, uh, and so then, uh, and so that, and so instead of thinking that this is really kind of one dimensional complex problem, that a two dimensional complex problem, because you have to, you have to um, you have, to have a, a map uh, anyway, so maybe I'll skip that because we have to finish on time. So, but this is <clears throat> this is uh, this is uh, this, for this particular boundary condition. The condition that I'm looking for uh, uh, the fact that it has to be tangent to to uh, to given eight pieces. That, that there's eight pieces in the boundary here, and the curve has to be tangent to this given eight pieces has to says that the says that the uh, in the language of algebraic geometry I'm looking for a plane cubic that meets eight given points. Um, uh, well there's uh, the if I just compute the index I will get 12 I mean but I'm interested so in fact there are 12 cubic that 12 cubic that meet given eight point 12 rational cubic that meet given eight given points but I'm interested in one in only one. And so this is not, this is not, this is not really how much, much, there's this, well, sorry, I had this picture, so I, I have to use it, but today we will do, we, in this course, we will, we will, we will focus on things which are um, even more, so in this course. On X, so X would be already for me, would be X, X infrared already. It's always be, it's always the most much vacuum, but even more supersymmetry. Supersymmetry. Um, Namely, namely, we will have uh, it will be 
so so this is I, I started beginning saying that the uh, supersymmetry this um, this is basic example is a drama operator that extended the basic example for extended symmetry is the is del and del bar and their and their conjugates and then uh, the basic example for even more extended supersymmetry is when it's like a hyperkeller manifold where you have uh, del bars for every single of the, you know you have you know like uh, you have four dels and four the and four of their uh, conjugates. And so this would be an algebraic thing because an algebraic analog of hyperkeller manifold will be it will be algebraic symplectic. Except, albeit non-equivalently, so this means mean group G will be allowed to scale. So there's a general theory of algebraic symplectic manifold says on the on the reducible one. This uh, the form is unique up to a multiple, and so this since it's unique up to a multiple, any group action will have to scale it, and so this is not this is not uh, we 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 do allow that scale. So in fact, we kind of I mean, kind of only makes that that scaling. It's the most interesting variable. That weight, in fact, that weight, corresponding character. So I have a character, maybe not H bar, from G to C star. So this is an element. So it's, it's a it's a character. It's an element in K G point. So this will be will be the deformation parameter. Uh, Anton's asking for uh, for decomposition of a compact manifold, which I think is true. But also, it's it's uh, the proof is terrible. I think it's a anyway. The examples we have, they all reduce. It. So uh, will be deformation parameter. Um, uh, yeah, Anton is right. So thanks, Anton, for keeping me out of it. Deformation parameter. Uh, uh, in this quantum group, that quantum group. So this is, this is, this is the point is that if I have a geometric construction of some algebraic object, then in particular, the the cohomology, the cohomology of the point that is the base ring of the whole construction. So in particular, so all elements, all elements in all kind of deformation parameters and so forth, since they're they're elements in some base ring, they 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 live in things like variant k theory of a point. And so that, that is this. And the main, and I apologize since it's, uh, I have three minutes, uh, three minutes to the end of the lectures and I see, and, uh, and I, um, but I mean, I apologize, I'm gonna run over time, but I, I wanna say in the first lecture, what is it I wanna, I mean, I try, what is it that I will try to prove in this lecture? So maybe let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, Let's, uh, and there's kind of a sort of amazing, amazing phenomenon. Is, is, it's what called, this is, this is something called 3D mirror symmetry. Which says that the the indices there's they're they're symmetric they're pairs, and I have an example of behind me. So there's a, there are pairs of such x. This is like this is like Langlois duality. Gone well or somehow really. really to the extent if 
So this is fx is as a is a Lie algebra. of the 21st century, which I sometimes say, then, then this is the Langmuir's duality. And we'll talk more about this. And so this 3 0 century says that the indices, their pairs, their pairs X and its mirror where the indices, so we had the index here, this was an element in the K theory, the current K theory of the take modular of curves Mark point, and then with a mark point, and then XN. Uh, here, well, if you think about it, this is really, this is not when I said that this is how the index is defined, but this is really, you, you have to add a variable that counts the degree. A variable that remembers the degree of the map. Yeah, the map F going from when I forget the map F, and of course. I can have you know, maps of higher and higher degree. And so I put, so what is the degree of the map? Degree of the map is, so I stick, I take, I take D, D is the degree. This is really an element. This is, this is defined as the push forward of the fundamental class in H lower to X set. And then Z to the degree is the character of the torus Z do to this group. This is a, in our examples, this is a lattice, and then the dual torus is of this. This is a character, and so this is if I if for every if the contribution every map I um, I uh, um, I, uh, I multiply by that to degree, I get me a series here, and the geology says that this is the same. So this is in fact equal to make it because equal kind of it's kind of an amazing statement to the same Let's check with with well of course curves have to stay the same somehow curve curve has a curve has uh, nowhere to go, but we exchange, exchange Z. So then we take, so then we had this torus Z is exchanged with, uh, with the maximal torus Maybe we'll call it A check in automorphisms. So if, if I if I take symplectic automorphisms, automorphisms of X check preserving their symplectic form, then this is exchanged, and um, 
and then similarly the torus A here is exchanged with the check. So this is the there is there is um, the uh, this um, the synthesis in compact geometry they're rational functions and uh, and their poles of those rational functions are are uh, poles poles in a and z are roots in two dual senses. There's kind of two dual senses, maybe these are called equivalent. These are called Keller. And then, um, and then, so there's, there's a, in, in usual V theory, we have roots and core roots, but they, they since, so, so usual, no, usually, usual Langlands. And then we take X to be T star of G mod B. Then, then the, both the curves and A is maximal torus in G. So then, uh, so then there's a, the, the, the curve classes and the, so the curve classes are core roots in G and, uh, and the roots are quite precisely the, 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 this, this poles in the current variables. And, uh, but in, in this situation, roots and core roots, they live in spaces on very different dimension. And since, since they have, a, they have a, a, this, um, this indices are some elements in K theory and they're, you know, they're, it's much more, they contain much more, much more information than, um, than uh, just the location of the poles, but in particular, they exchange this kind of, the, this, uh, the way why it's called Langlands reality is because like the basic data, the basic data is, um, is exchanged the, exactly the way the roots go to core roots. Oh, well, let me look in my notes and, and uh, see what, uh, how much have I forgotten to say? Uh, well, well, I'm over time anyway. So, um, so next, um, so next, the plan for next time. Plan for next time. Would be uh, so. This is the, there. Are many there are many ingredients. So so, long term goal. Optimistic goal. Optimistic goal is to prove this for this course. Prove this whenever defined. And 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 the and whenever defined refers to the fact that uh, that um, the there's some foundational issues defining this 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 indices in, in situation. So maybe it's, uh, and uh, well, it will be a long kind of long process. So next time. There are many, there are many ingredients I mentioned, but this will be just introduction to quantum. All right, that's uh, that's all I well, it's uh, less than I wanted to say, but I've used more time than I had, and so maybe I'll, sir. People have questions. Can you? Uh, is, that, is there a way to ask them? You can try. Or, or there's a. I believe you can ask questions in the Telegram channel. So that's. A, so if you if you don't have an immediate question, I, I don't see anybody. I don't think anybody is. Uh, so 
tell us in the chat. So, Anton's question, Anton is right, but it's uh, the, the X we're going to consider, the, the scale is a subjective form anyway. <laughs> All right. Other questions? Then, In the uh, which is Paisiba. Ah, okay. So the, the, oh, the picture behind me is the simplest example of this. So is the simple example. So sorry, this is, uh, you can't really see it. So it's, 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 a, it's a, oh no, you can see it. So this, sorry, this was, so the simplest example of this duality is, uh, is, uh, is you take one X is T star of projective space and the other X is, so this is, so this, T star G mod in an example. So there, this is this is, this is a special case of uh, there's a special case of two special of two special cases. One is is your T star G mod B and then T star of the dual. Well, the, it may have a, not the general orbit but a special orbit that will be like uh, that occur, so here's one is a one is a very small orbit for GLN and then the other is a slice to a singularity. Which also you can think of this as a as an example of um, one is a space of one instanton of rank n plus one on C two, and another is uh, a space of one instanton of rank one, but on a more complicated variety on A n surface. All right, well that that'll uh, take a while to define what these guys are. And, and... All right. Well, I thank everybody. I'm sorry, I should have said by I uh, by said by I'm grateful for people to listening to this and uh, hope everybody is uh, healthy and safe and uh, and then we will uh, to be continued. To, to my experience, it is difficult to. Um, oh.